Griffiths. I'm a development officer in RNIB's digital accessibility team. I'm Robin Spinks. I work as principal manager for digital accessibility at RNIB. We've touched on the main uh, accessibility features that are useful for users with low vision or no vision, and now we'd like to put them into an educational context. So Robin, perhaps you'd like to talk about some of the apps that are useful for learners using the iPad. So iBooks is an online bookstore and book reading application for the iPad. It's very useful in a learning situation. There are more than a million books and growing day by day. Um, it's a very simple interface and we can use it with magnification, with large text and also with speech. We've got a library which tells us about all the books that we have on the device. We can flip over and go into the bookstore where we can download content and purchase it. And, and download it to the device. So we'll flip back. I'm going to open up a book here which is um, called uh, Made in Britain. Taking a look around the interface using magnification first of all, we've got some very simple buttons that allow us to go into the lib back into the library from the individual book, navigate the structure of the book. Uh, we've got the title across the top. We've also got here uh, the font size so we can take the font size up or down so we've also got a search button. On the right hand side we've got a bookmarking button. We can also read the book using the voiceover screen reader. So I'm going to triple click. Voiceover on. iBooks. Library. Button. Page 20. This is a book for anyone who is interested in Britain's economy. I'm going to pause it and I'm actually going to slow it down because I used the voiceover rotor control. And I'm doing that simply by pretending that there is an old-fashioned dial on the display of the device. Language, link, blank containers, speech rate. And as I turn round, you'll hear a little ticking sound, and then you'll hear the announcement of a function, so language, speech rate. In this case, we're on speech rate, and if I flick upwards... 35%, 40%. The speech rate goes up. If I flick down... 35%, 30%. I'm going to continue reading. This is a book for anyone who is interested in Britain's economy. iBooks is a really useful app um, for, for learners of any subject and the range of material on the iBooks store is being added to constantly. We're now going to turn to uh, another app and this is really, I guess, useful in a learning context, particularly for uh, younger learners. This is an app which is called Barefoot Atlas. This is an interactive atlas. Now, you'll notice that there is a uh, soundtrack with this app, so it's completely multimedia. And what we're able to do is explore the globe in a three-dimensional form, simply using our fingers. So we're going to find a specific Spain. country. So we've come to Spain. And if we want to find out about a particular place, we can read down the right hand side of the screen. We can read uh, lots of data about land area and population, currency, and against some of the items on the, the map on this app, we have an actual audio input, so. The Western Highlands of Scotland receive as much as nine feet of rain each year. We can then move around. Viking longship. One feature of tablets, which is a real distinguishing feature for blind and partially sighted learners, is the onboard camera. So I'm using it just now to focus on some text, which happens to be on a table in front of me. I can snap uh, a picture of the text and then pinch it up afterwards, or I can email it. So using a camera on a tablet can be really helpful if you have low vision. It can allow you to actually focus on what's being displayed and read it in real time and reduce another barrier to learning. As well as simply using the camera, there are an increasing number of apps that can be used in conjunction with the camera, such as Tap Tap See, that can enable a blind person to recognise objects in front of them. And indeed, there's a large number of apps now which are being designed for blind and low vision users. For instance, Big Browser, um, Flexi, which is a typing application, and VIA, which is a great way of finding out what new apps are out there and what apps people are using. And another one is Join Me, which enables someone who's using an iPad to um, see what is going on on the teacher's computer. There are many things that you can do to make the iPad a really useful tool in the classroom for learners of any age. 
We mustn't, of course, forget Apple TV. That allows us to connect the iPad and mirror the image that's on screen up onto a large high definition screen, much like a smart board would be used. And it gives us a really good alternative, which is flexible and allows us to integrate it into the classroom setting. Lots of resources there for you to learn about the iPad and how it can be customized to make it user friendly for students with a visual impairment or indeed for staff. We're constantly developing resources and adding them to RNIB's website. You can take a look at the tablets in the classroom section of RNIB's website to find out more. And please don't forget to get in touch and share your story of where the iPads worked particularly well or perhaps where it's not worked well in an education setting. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at digitalaccess at rnib.org.uk. RNIB, supporting blind and partially sighted people.